All right, big, big, big news on this guy. So we know where he's going. Imminently about to sign with an organization, which is going to illuminate so many things about why certain people said things in the media that are very notable now. We know why people were making things up. Some people were making things up, actually, about interacting with Francis. We now know why they were doing that. And then other people made statements. Look, at, I'm going to illuminate all of these things that have happened around Francis now because now that we know where he's going to go, that tells us the whole story. This guy is about to make a big announcement. And you know what is the most interesting part of the announcement he's going to make? Is that where he's going, you got a lot of people who have a common enemy, dude. A big common enemy. And it's very, very notable. These are not small-time people either. It's like... They are collecting, they're, they're setting up for a war. And that's very interesting and we're gonna talk about it. So before I get into it, like I ask in every single video, if you don't mind subscribing to the channel, I appreciate you guys. I don't like asking every video, I really don't. I do it because I prioritize the success of the channel over every other thing in the entire world. And so if you don't mind, if you watch my content, please subscribe to the channel. And if you really like my channel, you could ring the bell so you know every time that I upload instantly. But uh, yeah, I would do it for you if you asked and I was watching your channel, I promise. All right, so here is the deal. Let's start with this video, which tells us what we know. And uh, then we're going to jump into a bunch of the surrounding information that I have that a lot of you guys may not have. And also, I can illuminate a bunch of things that you've already heard about. Let's rock. Boom. After leaving UFC, news about Francis Ngannou has been scarce, leaving his future unknown. Despite his likely move to boxing, Ariel Helwani recently reported that Nganu is on the verge of signing with an MMA promotion, having already met with several organizations. Despite his lack of boxing experience, Nganu gained a reputation for his formidable knockout power in the cage. Helwani revealed that he had spoken privately with Nganu and had an idea of which promotion he was close to signing with. While Nganu and Chatri of One left their meeting on good terms, it was unlikely that Nganu would sign with them because he had already verbally committed to someone else. Nganu was particularly enthusiastic when asked about the PFL, which Jake Paul recently signed with and established a super fight division that could potentially be Nganu's new home. Ariel said this, Francis is very close to signing a new deal with another promotion. According to Francis, he was very upfront about this. Nganu and Chatri of one championship, left the meeting on good terms, but both of them came to an understanding, because he had already verbally committed to someone, it's more than likely he's not going to one championship. I thought it was really interesting, when I asked Nganu about PFL, that was the one that really got him fired up. Alright, so that is the information that now informs all of the following information. So, like I said, the most interesting part of this particular story, in my opinion, is related to common enemies. So, can you think of some people at PFL that have a common enemy? Some really important people in the industry that have a common enemy who is the most important person in the industry, uh, depending on how you look at things, okay? So, I would say that Francis has a whether he has been overt about it or not, conflict with the UFC, right? I think, I mean, I don't know if he, I mean, he's never said anything directly negative about the UFC, which was very smart. I don't ever suggest fighters make enemies with, just in general, if there is a person who would potentially give you money in the future in order to do a job, turning them into a person who would never give you money to do a job is poor business. He has done an excellent job of not doing that, although, well, at least publicly not doing that. Given that the UFC said they would never work with him again, I mean, who knows? But the UFC is the answer, and Dana White specifically. So, Jake Paul also just signed with the PFL, and they're talking about a super fight division. Hmm, interesting, right? So what they're saying essentially, if I understand them correctly, is that we're not talking about like, oh, Francis will be the heavyweight champion of the PFL. Right. They're talking about a super fight division where they can set up super fights because, you know, I mean, bottom line, they don't they won't have enough heavyweights for there to be like a really serious, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe they want him to be the heavyweight champion is irrelevant. But what you have is you have Jake Paul, very powerful in the industry. And if you don't think that that's true, you're out of your mind. Francis Ngannou, former UFC champion. Well, 
uh, depending, I mean, former, they stripped him, but was the UFC champion before he left the organization. And then another big one. Who's that? Who's that at PFL? Who's an important one at UPFL? Answer, Dan Hardy, who is the VP of this, that, or the other. He has an important role at PFL, important enough that he's like going public, super excited about the opportunity to potentially sign Francis. And I forget, like, how did Dan Hardy leave the UFC? Was it on good terms? No, it wasn't. He felt that he had been unfairly treated and that they had lied about, you know, whatever had happened. Look, I have absolutely, I have absolutely no insight into what happened over there at all. None. Zero. They, you know, they said that he yelled at a woman or something, and he said that that was ridiculous and not true. I have absolutely no idea. I'm just, bottom line, Dan Hardy for sure wants to beat up the UFC, you know, in business or whatever. And now you have Francis, Jake, and... Now, here's the other thing, too, is we look at what happened with the 1FC meeting, Right? where Chaudhry and and, uh, and Francis met, and it was like, all right, you know, we decided not to move forward with the thing with Francis. His exact, uh, his exact statement was, I met Francis for almost three hours. Off After careful reflection, we decided not to submit our final offer. I didn't feel Francis and I were fully aligned on non-financial matters. It's nothing personal. So now that we know that Francis went in there and he's like, look, I'm about to sign with another organization, he doesn't want to look like they made an offer that Francis then rejected. That That weakens their brand. That weakens their brand, right? So, of course, he says, look, man, you know, uh, it's not you. It's me. It's like, OK, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. You know, OK. I mean, look, there's I mean, it's, it's a it's a strong play. I mean, honestly, it is a strong strategic play. It's exactly what he should do. If he knows they're not going to get him, there's absolutely no reason to put an offer in and then look like you got beat. You come out and you're like, look, we decided not to make an offer. That's the, that's the correct play. BKFC also indicated that they had been talking to Francis and put an offer in front of him or whatever. That's, uh, uh, as far as I understand it, uh, they were not like in the conversation like, um, you know, like PFL or 1FC. But I mean, I don't know. That's that. That's the the rumor that I've heard is that like they never made an official offer to Francis. Like the conversation, the thing about like he's asking for too much money. I mean, look, like I I poked around. I don't know. Maybe they were having conversations that I was unable to track down. But uh, listen, like if I could pick where he would go personally, that's where. You know. So I'm not saying this is. There's no knock on BKFC. BKFC just hit a grand slam this week. A uh, uh, 700 foot home run. If I was Francis's manager and I had to pick one of these organizations and it wasn't going to be UFC, I would pick BKFC right now. Triller has an enormous amount of money, enormous amount of money. And Francis and Bare Knuckle would be bananas. And I've said this enough. But just in terms of, you know, me poking around, it's like I was uh, I was told that like they there's there wasn't any like serious conversations between them. But again, I like I haven't talked to Francis, so I I, I can't say for a hundred percent sure that the information I got was accurate. But uh, yeah, but anyway, it's neither here nor there. Let's continue. And you have this, you know, I I don't even like quoting this this rumor because I don't think that it's credible. But you do have this rumor that PFL was about to buy Bellator. Now, if they did that and they got all of the PF, or they got all the Bellator fighters. I mean, dude, that would be pretty nuts, man. Obviously, that would be really, really nuts. If they just bought Bellator, they all immediately stamped all their contracts over to PFL. It's interesting, dude. It would be an interesting play. But so if they bring Francis over to PFL and what they end up doing there is putting him in super fights, I don't really know exactly what that means in terms of, um, you know, like, does that mean that he would fight in the PFL, be the heavyweight champion? Would they be setting up fights with, I don't know, Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder specifically said he would fight him in MMA. You know, he would fight him in MMA. Now that, as much as people just assume that guys who are boxers have absolutely no chance in an MMA fight, blah, blah, blah. I mean, look, is that true? No, it's not true. Because there's always a chance that a guy with the skill level Deontay Wilder can win a fight, even if he doesn't have ground game. It's not, I mean, is it likely no. Francis wants to be a boxer, though. Maybe he wouldn't take him down, you know? And if he gets, to, if he's like, look, I'll stand with him until I get touched. If you get touched by Deontay Wilder, that's a problem, dude. Look, if 
those two guys end up fighting Deontay Wilder and Francis Ngannou end up fighting that is what my dream has always been MMA gloves those two guys squaring off that would be amazing so I mean look dude I said this yesterday and I want to really 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 stress the following because I said it in a in a message that I was sending to the bad guy and as I was saying it, it was one of those moments where like I think better when I'm talking I you know um, I, I, I literally cannot even explain to you guys how many times I record videos and I get nine minutes in and just through talking, I, I come up with something and I'm like, oh my God, that reframes the whole video and I have to start over. So this was one of those moments where I was, I was saying it and I was like, oh dude, and this is what that is. So when it comes to boxing, when it comes to boxing, Francis is not going to get to fight in a boxing match immediately, Right. Like he's not gonna get to box in a, he's not gonna get to fight in a boxing match. It, or I'm sorry, he's not gonna get to fight for the title immediately, right? He's not gonna be able to fight for the title immediately. However, however, oh, in, in case anybody's unclear on why, Tyson Fury is fighting against Ruiz and Deontay Wilder is fighting against uh, Anthony Joshua. Those are the fight. Those those are the boxing matches that that matter, right? So in the event that Francis wanted to get a title shot against Tyson Fury, one of those guys. The, you know, the, the, the momentum on that has obviously cooled off. The answer is you give him boxing matches, okay? You put him in there in boxing matches against guys that he can beat. The regular, the regular combat sports fan has never been able to connect the dots between how good is the guy that all they see is outcome. They do not, they, they fail on every level to connect this guy just knocked these three guys out. It's all, oh my God, this guy, oh my gosh. And you're like, okay, but who were those three guys? For whatever reason, they cannot ever make that connection, okay? Now, I fall into it too. Everybody does. You see a guy starch a guy. It's, it's like, it's really compelling. You're like, damn. And it's just one of those things, the visual of seeing a guy beat a guy and you think, wow, this guy, they look unbeatable, right? Because they dominated some other guy. You just don't really... Well, I mean, sometimes you don't do a good job, you know, connecting the fact that it's like, all right, well, any of the guys that we're talking about over here have skill sets that are absolutely non-comparable. But the reality is it doesn't matter. You don't need to show that Francis has a boxing skill set that is equal or, you know, even remotely close to Tyson Fury in order to build hype to sell a Tyson Fury fight. You just need to show that he is dangerous in boxing and get people thinking like, look, man, anybody with two hands can do it, man. Anyone with two hands can do it. And then you could potentially build a fight with Tyson Fury that will sell. All that matters is if it sells. That's the only thing that matters. You got Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. That actually happened, you know? And there were people who were betting on Conor. People were betting on Conor. Now, he ended up doing a lot better than anybody expected. And the judging, wow. Wow. We don't, we still don't, we don't talk about that enough. That we don't talk about that enough. That most of the judges gave the first round to Mayweather. Talk about the absolute most ludicrously corrupt or incompetent judging of all time. Mayweather threw no punches in the first round. None. Connor landed. I, I, I would challenge anyone with two eyeballs to watch the first round of the Mayweather McGregor fight. And then understand that almost every, I think two out of three judges scored that for Mayweather. It's, it is ludicrous, ludicrous, more ludicrous than, than that guy who picked Cheeto Vera over Sandhagen, more ludicrous than that, indefensible in, in any capacity anyway, but, uh, but yeah, this is interesting, dude. I mean, look, it's interesting. I said yesterday that I'd be disappointed if he goes to PFL and I can't pretend that I didn't say that because I do find this disappointing only because there are so many incredible fights in UFC. I mean, like if all of a sudden they were like, ah, gotcha, Francis back to the UFC, I would be like, God, thank you. Thank you, God. Not because I'm rooting against PFL, not because I'm, you know, a shill for the UFC it's because I am a combat sports fan and I want to see Francis fight John Jones. I want to see him fight Pavlovich. I want to see him fight against all these guys. I, literally, the top four guys in, you know, in the UFC, I want to see him fight all of them. You know? But nonetheless, it is what it is, dude. It is what it is. So... I assume this will be good money. I assume that this is giving Francis the things that he wanted. So congratulations to Francis. And I mean, obviously this is like, 
I mean, we're, we're at 90, 98% that that's what's going on. I should actually, uh, if Ariel knows, there are ways that I could find out without asking Ariel, I think. Anyway, but uh, I mean, look, this looks pretty definitive, right? Anyway, that's what I got. Uh, let's all, you know, celebrate for Francis, I guess, and be sad for ourselves that we don't get to see any of the UFC fights that we wanted. But it is what it is. Love you guys. Peace.